Yo, what is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a complete breakdown and walkthrough of the exact resume that I used that helped me land my first job in cybersecurity. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ben and I make videos like this one every single week. So make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you want some more lifestyle content and short form content, be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Cyber with Ben. With that said though, guys, let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, guys, so welcome to the inside of my computer. Right in front of us or right here, we have the resume that I used that helped me land my first job in cybersecurity. And I'll go ahead and break it down right now for you guys. Throughout this video, I'll go over some, my, some of my tips and some of the biggest things you should be looking out for and including in your resume when looking to start applying for full-time cybersecurity jobs. Uh, and we'll go from there. So just starting off the top, we have my name, obviously. Uh, the black bar at the um, under my name right here is actually just some personal information like my LinkedIn, my email address, phone number, things of that sort. So just block that out for this video. I had my current title, my current job title right here. I was a technical expert working at Apple at the time. So I just added my current job title uh, when I was applying for jobs uh, right next to my name. So moving down to the professional experience section. So I have the most recent experience uh, listed at the top and then the oldest one, the oldest sort of like relevant one that I wanted to include at the bottom. So I guess we'll start off at the bottom and work our way up to the most recent experience uh, at the time. I have from 2016 to 2021 is I was the owner of a company called Blomo LLC. And for those of you guys who don't know, back in my day when I was a high schooler, um, I was always looking to find ways to make money and sort of build a small business on the side while I was still in school. Um, Cause I knew when I was working in high school, I'd be working minimum wage jobs. And I knew that finding a way to make more money would, would be the most um, beneficial thing to do at the time. So I went ahead and started a sort of an e-commerce business where I would buy and resell goods um, on eBay and Amazon, Facebook marketplace, things of that sort. Um, so just buying things for a certain amount and then selling it for more and keeping the profits and then doing that over and over again. So that's what Blomo LLC was. It did pretty well at the time. I did over 100K in sales revenue in under one year uh, of doing it. So it was really successful. It really helped me pay my tuition for college and things of that sort. So it was really good. It was a really good experience to learn so many different skills in terms of running a business. So I thought, why not include that on my resume? Also, one little quick tip that I have for you is if you have some sort of a business like this, or some sort of interesting experience that would apply to a professional job that you're applying for, uh, maybe include it on your resume. I think it would be a really good, maybe a conversation starter, or just to show that you have a lot of different types of skills uh, under your belt. So this is one. This one was actually asked a few times uh, during my sort of internship application process and also full-time job application process. They did ask me about this business right here, and it was a nice little story to tell and also to show that I have a bunch of different skills when it comes to running a business as well. So moving up to a uh, shared information services intern at Deloitte. For those of you guys who don't know, Deloitte is a consulting firm. It's a big four consulting firm. It's on a global scale. So it, it works in multiple countries. So it's a pretty big company. So I was an intern. I applied to Deloitte during my junior and senior year summers. And so, so this is pretty much my summer internship. Uh, my first internship in 2021 was for the shared information services team or the patch management team. So it was my job to pretty much ensure that all Deloitte systems had the latest patches. And if they didn't, to make sure that we're notating that and we're taking those systems into account and also providing metrics to senior leadership to ensure that they know how many machines uh, aren't compliant with certain uh, security updates and how many uh, machines are and how they, they do have the latest security patches. So that was my job. We use a bunch of different tooling, a bunch of different um, skills and stuff like that, like SQL, SCCM, Excel, you know, PowerPoint to build metrics and presentations and things of that sort. Also included some challenge that I did with fellow interns right over here called the Innovation Challenge. So I pretty much included everything that I did throughout this internship and try to explain it in a really concise, but also detailed way. And I think I did a pretty good job at that with these three bullet points right here. One of the biggest things that you can do in terms of your resume is quantifying sort of your performance. So in this case, since I was an intern, there wasn't a whole lot to quantify just because as an intern, you're not really doing a sort of really impactful work. You're kind of just learning the ropes and seeing how your team operates and finding different ways to 
make an impact from there. Um, so you're not really necessarily a heavy hitter, but if you do have some more uh, experiences on your resume where you're able to quantify your performance, definitely try to do that throughout your entire resume um, just because it's, it's a lot more impactful and it's sort of more memorable when it comes to a recruiter's point of view. So moving up to operations specialist right over here. So this is my part-time job when I was in college. I worked at Apple for almost four years. I started off as an operations specialist. Um, for those of you who don't know, operations specialist is someone who works in the backstage. So I'll pretty much be in charge of fulfilling online orders, making sure inventory was, was accurate and the numbers were accurate, processing returns. Um, that was really my job as an operations specialist. And at the time, when I was in college, I was majoring in information systems and operations management. So that was my major, the, that was what my major was called. And to have a job that directly aligns with what I was majoring in, because you know the operations piece is there, was a really big and important thing that I wanted to have on my resume. So throughout your time, whether it be in college or just in your career in general, I mean, if you're wanting to break into cybersecurity, try and create these experiences and try to have jobs and intentionally try to, to have them line up and build towards what you want to do in cybersecurity or in this case with my major. So I knew this job as an operations specialist would align really well with my major in college, therefore would look a lot better on my resume when it came time to apply for internships and full-time jobs. So in alignment with that, the next sort of experience was technical specialist. This was the same sort of level, but just doing a different thing. I went ahead and made that jump into the technical aspect of Apple. So pretty much taking appointments, troubleshooting, having a lot of customer interaction. And then from there, I did that for a little bit less than a year and then got promoted to technical expert right over here where the main difference is between is just doing the same thing a technical specialist does so troubleshooting taking appointments things of that sort but as an expert you have more of a, a mentorship aspect to it so you're training other specialists um, you also answer questions from specialists you're also performing uh, repairs on iphones and uh, stuff like that in the backstage of things. So I did technical expert for over a year. And then from there, my last, my most recent uh, internship experience was at Deloitte again. I got a return offer from Deloitte, um, except this time is with a GRC team, a governance risk and compliance team. And then from there, I also listed some of the tooling I did. I used a ServiceNow, Excel, uh, different tasks I did and what I did as an intern. Yeah, so I pretty much described everything I did in these three bullet points in this internship, as well as this one. And one of the biggest recommendations I can have for you guys is if you're still in school or if you're someone looking to pivot into cybersecurity, one of the best things you can do for yourself is getting an internship on your resume. Internships are so important to have because when it's time to apply for full-time jobs, they see that you have professional experience already. They see that companies are, are wanting you to come back to their company and intern again, so it looks really good. And I think that was one of the reasons why my resume was really strong uh, because it shows that I've worked for really big name companies like Deloitte, Apple, and they also wanted me back. I also got promoted right here uh, from specialist to expert. So all of these things kind of send a message to the recruiter that's looking at my resume. And yeah, so I think it's really good to tell a story and to be intentional with the experiences you put on your resume and the experience that you really strive to get while you're still in school while you're looking to build into cybersecurity. So moving on from there, uh, let's go to the education piece. Starting at the bottom right here, I got my Associates of Science. So I went to a community college for the first two years of my college career. So I added that some of the, to the uh, education piece here, Northern Virginia Community College. GPA was 3.6, which is all right, uh, nothing crazy. You probably don't have to include your GPA into your education piece. Um, just because I don't think it's completely necessary. I did, but one of the reasons why I went to community college was first of all, just to save money. I knew that college and university is extremely expensive nowadays. And my main goal was to graduate with no debt um, and going to community college for the first two years played a huge role in being able to achieve that goal. So moving on to the next piece of education is when I transferred over to George Mason University, which is a local state school near me. I majored, like I said before, in information systems and operations management 
what is the mix of business and IT. And they also had a few classes involving cybersecurity. I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you're still in school right now, your university probably offers a major similar to what I did, where it's a mix of business and IT or a business and cybersecurity. I highly recommend those uh, majors just because they're really versatile. You can really go anywhere you want and take any job that you want when it comes to business or even technology. I know some people who did the same major and went into computer science later on in their professional careers. I know people who went into cybersecurity like myself. I know people who went into consulting. It's an extremely versatile degree and I highly recommend you guys look into it as well if your university offers it. So I studied at George Mason University and graduated with a 3.53 GPA, which isn't too crazy at all either. So I wasn't a crazy book nerd or a really straight A student. This is pretty average or maybe slightly above average. So you don't need to be, you know, a 4.0 student, nothing like that. And you don't probably don't have to include your GPA in the resume at all. So let's move on to the certificates. So at the time of applying for full-time jobs, I actually just had the Google IT support professional certificates. And also, uh, and I think that was it. At, that, at this point, I was working on getting the Security Plus because I knew the Security Plus would be a huge resume booster. And it still is. I think right now in this climate, um, the Security Plus is going to be a requirement at this point, really, especially because it's so competitive nowadays as well. So at this time, though, I just had that Google IT support professional certificate, what is sort of like the fundamentals of IT and technology and sort of networking. Um, I think one of the reasons why I was still able to get a full time job without having a bunch of different certifications is because of how strong my resume was in terms of professional experience when it comes to working at Deloitte and also Apple as well, having years of experience working at Apple. I think that was able to speak to the recruiter in terms of my soft skills, in terms of my professional experience, and also the, the variety of different experiences I had on my resume. I think that is what really set me apart from maybe someone who has no professional experience versus having a bunch of different certifications. So make sure you guys find a good balance of both. I think ideally, if I were to go back in time, I would have the same professional experience that I had uh, at that time, but also pair that with having more certifications. And who knows, I might have had more full time job offers, more opportunities, who knows, but the best of both worlds would be having a good amount of certifications and also having good professional experience as well. So if you're in the beginning of your journey trying to find a job in cybersecurity or if you're still in school, find that balance of having both professional experience on your resume and building that out and also having certifications that really align with what kind of roles you're applying for. So think about Security Plus, Network Plus, AWS, Cloud Practitioner, or Solutions Architect. These are some fundamental certifications that you should have if you want to maximize your chances in getting a full-time job. And last but not least, we have the skills section right at the bottom over here. To be honest, the skill the skill section that I have listed right here is pretty weak. Um, it's pretty vague. Technical support knowledge, technical consulting, Microsoft Excel, analytical and critical thinking, Tableau. This skill section is pretty vague. Uh, I probably could have just deleted everything and not included that unless I really had maybe a you know a scripting language or an, an, uh, a tool that's used throughout the industry in cybersecurity. Like if it was like CrowdStrike or if it was like ServiceNow, I probably could include that here as well, but I already did up here. Um, so I didn't really include it at the bottom, but I think ideally as well, I probably have to include more specific skills. These are just too vague. So I'd improve that on my end if I were to go back in time. But pretty much guys, that is going to be my resume that I use to help me land my first full-time job in cybersecurity. Let me know what you guys think about it. So just to summarize the entire thing up right here. Some of the main things you should be striving for when you're looking to build out your resume is first of all, getting some good professional experience that aligns with your internship or full-time job that you're applying for. In my case, it was internships in cybersecurity and also uh, professional experience working part-time at Apple doing technical consulting, troubleshooting, and repairing phones. Um, those are the two aspects in, in my professional experience that I think really worked well for me. Also, lesson number three is going to be including including certificates and making sure that you have certificates under your belt to set you apart from everyone else. So think about the Security Plus, Network Plus, and the cloud certifications that I mentioned before. Um, so those are my three tips when it comes to optimizing your resume. Also for the actual bullet points, making sure that you include all the tools that you used and talk about some of the impactful things that you did. So quantifying things if possible within these bullet points to make, make it clear to the recruiter exactly what you did and what kind of skills you have to bring to the table. Also in terms of the resume itself is pretty straightforward and simple. There's no crazy font. There's no crazy coloring. It's really organized 
in different sections so it's really easy to read and digest. So try and keep your resume as simple as possible and don't overdo it. With that being said though guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found this video insightful, go ahead and leave a comment down below and make sure to like the video. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss out on videos like this one every single week. And if you want some more lifestyle content and short form cybersecurity content, go ahead and follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Cyber with Ben. That means so though guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.